Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So today we're going to be doing the spray painting stage on this Nissan X-Trail. So we've got a brand new rear bumper cover that you can see over the back of the booth there. We've then got the quarter panel which is where the repair was and we're blending into the rear door. And for those of you who don't know why we blend panels, because I do actually have quite a wide audience from the experienced to the totally unexperienced. So yeah, the reason we are uh, spraying that rear door is to ensure that there is no color difference from the quarter panel to the door because when we mix our new color up, sometimes there can be minor differences. Now, yes, we do color match, but still with silver, especially this kind of color it is best practice to just blend it for what it takes it's not actually a massive job to spray the adjacent panel and to blend that color in so basically it's better safe than sorry I guess rather than having someone having even if it's like one or two shades out I don't know what a shade is <laughs> explain someone what a shade is but whatever a shade is even if it is only one or two shades out, you're better off just blending into the um, the next panel. So all of that aside, we're actually starting off with the rear bumper cover. So obviously I already did some masking on it because the lower section of that rear bumper cover stays black. Um, I used some fine line masking tape, which is like a vinyl tape. Put that down first. I've found these days it's best off going down first because it can actually start lifting up um, if you put it down second. And yeah, look, I've found the edges yeah, do peel off quite nicely um, after a bake or after it dries out overnight. So yeah, obviously after I had all the masking done, I gave it a good wipe down. And what I've been doing these days is just some trials. So um, yeah, I've been trialing using the Waterborne Cleaner, which is the Standox uh, 6800. Um, and it seems to be working. Look, I, I have troubles, right? getting all the little bits of fluff off bumpers, right? Because you wipe the bumper down um, and then you can get rid of the static, but then you leave little bits of fluff behind from the rag and yeah, look, I've tried loads and loads of different methods, but sometimes it just turns out that you get little bits of fluff in the wet on wet primer of your bumper cover. So it's actually more important to make sure that you sand them out of your primer now I'm spraying this Standox Waterborne system. Because of the way that you have to spray this Standox Waterborne, and it does take a little bit longer to dry, um, so basically, that's what you saw me doing a minute or two ago. I was going over that bumper to make sure that there wasn't any nibs or little bits of fluff in that primer before I put the color over. Because as I say, it is a little bit more important now I'm spraying this Standox Waterborne system. And that's mainly because of the application method. Like, you've pretty much got this um, application that you're meant to stick to. And if you stray too far outside of that recommended application method, you will actually get color differences. So I've done it before. Look, I'm one of those people that I learn something better by stuffing it up myself. You know, you can tell me not to do something a hundred times, but until I stuff it up myself, that's when I'll really learn. So I actually had that happen to me on a rear bumper cover. I got a few bits of fluff in the bumper cover, right? I missed them until I got the base coat down, then it turns out I had to scuff them all out, right? And then I actually um, sprayed the base coat down a bit different than what they actually recommended, and it changed the color. So I'd actually match my color perfectly, but because I sprayed it a little bit differently, then I did the color card, it actually changed the color, I put the bumper back on the car and I was like, oh no man, it's like really dark. So yeah, as I say, get, get your panels as clean as possible before you put your base coat down. All that aside, what we're doing now is the base coat blender and I've got that in the FLG5, 1.4 mil. So this is a bit of a channel favorite. Lots of people have got onto this gun via me. Now at the moment, here in Perth, it's in the middle of our summer. So this base coat is drying quite quickly. Now the worst thing that can happen when you're spraying, especially a silver, spraying Stando Blue, Chromax Pro or Speeds High Tech is having this base coat blender dry before you get to do your blend. That is honestly the worst thing that can probably happen. Well, I'm sure there might be some other bad things that can happen with it, with it but it's up there with one of the worst things that can happen. Trust me, it's happened to me before and I made an absolute mess out of one of these jobs. So, as you see, I'll put it through that 1.4 mil. It's actually slow base coat blend, which I was using there to help slow it down. And then I've gone straight up to it, doing my blend first. It might seem a little bit odd, especially if all you've done is watched my solvent videos and 
in those videos I would always get my first coat on my primer patch and then sort of work your way out so yeah using this system you're basically working your way out two in uh, and then you cover the center in so it happens very quickly it really does spraying the uh, base coat down when you're spraying this stando blue system um, it takes literally the best part of a minute and it's all down so one other thing I'd like to mention is that you've got to get that prep work spot on so one thing I don't like doing is spraying uh, the wet on wet primer aka sealer like what you saw me spray on that bumper so I don't like spraying that over panels that are on the car so for instance on this job here let's just say I, I wanted to spray some wet on wet primer or sealer whatever you want to call it over the repair here right I would have got that sealer all through the jams of the fuel flap and the um, quarter to rear door jam as well and there's a good chance in fact I've found nine times out of ten the color won't always follow it 100% so then you'll have little primer edges on the inside and they just look ugly and yeah I don't like looking at them so I always end up having to squirt them in so as I say that's why I try to avoid it if there is any imperfections in the prep work I'll always try to do it before I start spraying my base coat. So I might get some 1K primer, aerosol 1K primer in Chromax and Stano Blue. They've got value shaded or color shaded different aerosol primer cans. So you've got like a, a dark one and a light one and like a mid one. So yeah, they're pretty handy and yeah, I use them a fair bit. So you might be wondering why I'm using my standard pot on this job here, whereas a lot of the time I'll use my PPS pot. So basically, I personally find just about every single disposable pot system is just really messy as soon as you need to tint colors. So the way that um, I need to obviously tint a color is put some into the gun first, do a color card, check the color, and then it might turn out that I need to add a little bit of black, blue, red, whatever it be, a bit of violet, um, and then go back to the gun, tip some out of the gun, and uh, put the new fresh load of matched paint into that gun again. Now I find it really easy to do with these standard pots and nice and clean, but if you go 3M PPS, SADA RPS, just about any single disposable pot system on the market, as soon as you have to start double handling stuff with them, they just get really messy. So as I say, as soon as I think I'm going to have to color match the color, I'll just go straight for the standard pot. So yeah, I've got two guns that I use uh, for this Stando Blue lately. So that's one of them, obviously. That's the GTI Pro. That's not even a Pro Light. So it's a GTI Pro with the TE20 air cap on it and the 1.3 mil fluid tip. And that's been working very nicely for me in the summer months. And if I'm just going straight off a color card, so looking at a color card and spraying it straight away without checking the color, I'll use my Devilbus DV1, but I'll actually use the disposable pot because yeah as I say as soon as you have to tint these colors with any of those pots it just gets really messy so as I say when I was spraying that um, base coat down and doing that blend it did happen pretty quickly and look if you want to have a bit more of an idea of how how I do blend this stuff go back and have a look at it again because I know there's lots of people sort of in this transition period at the moment I had a guy leave a comment literally just this morning and he sort of having some um, troubles transitioning to it. He reckons he got caught some things by his paint rep and he's basically been thrown under the bus um, to why an accident happened and I get that like I hate it as well right I had this paint rep and he wanted to come in with me to spray a job and I'm like man I don't need you in there like I, this is what I said to him I said man when you're standing there I'm thinking about trying to keep you happy like what's he gonna tell me that I should be doing more so than what I think I should be doing, if that makes sense. Like, because that's when he said, Oh, you know, you've got like all these subscribers on YouTube, you know, you're not shy. And I'm like, Man, I'm not shy. It's one of those things that, as I was saying before, sometimes you just got to mess things up and then you ask the questions, is hey, hey, paint rep, this is what happened. He'll say, What were you doing? That's probably a better way to learn, I think, anyway, than having someone sort of like standing over your shoulder saying, Hey, don't do that. Hey, don't do that. Like, you're more, yeah, worried about like trying to keep them happy than actually getting the job done right so that's what I found anyway I mean I've been doing this stuff for 20 years and so had the guy that um, left that comment too so you know you're not talking about inexperienced painters and it is a bit to get your head around you know it, it really is because it's totally different than spraying solvent but as I say like once you get the hang of it it is mint man I swear like you 
in many ways you wouldn't want to go back to spraying solvent after spraying this stuff your jobs come up so much cleaner um, blends are pretty simple once you get the hang of it now what you might have noticed that I was actually doing is when I was doing that blend I actually didn't even feather my fingers off that trigger at all which is something that if you have watched many of my videos I used to do a lot of and look, I still do a bit of it. I was just like playing around with a few different methods that that's what they told me, you know, don't like let your fingers off the trigger as you're blending because it can create like heavy and um, light spots in the spray pattern. So yeah, look, as I say, just play around with it. Play around with the air pressure settings. Now it turns out on this job here, obviously I had the entire rear door to blend. So I had loads of room. So I actually had the pressure up at two bar when I was spraying the color down. Now, if I had a little bit less room, I'd probably lower the pressure when I was doing the blend. I've been doing that lately and it does work. That's one thing that like previously, when I was spraying Chromax Pro like three and a half years ago, I kind of like listened to everything they said and I was probably following it too closely, if you know what I mean. Like I probably wasn't as prepared to jump outside of those boundaries and find out um, what does work. Whereas this time, I think I, I just freed myself up a bit and I'm like, man, I'm doing what I want. And if it works, it works. So yeah, I've done a few other videos saying pretty much similar things. You know, I had the paint rep come in and say, hey, that looks great. And then I told him, I did this, I did this, and I did this, like three things that he straight out said you shouldn't do. And I said, mate, who are you to tell me I'm wrong? Have a look at the finish of the job. There is not one drop of um, color on the adjacent panel, so I'm not ruining my blends. Um, the job's nice and clean. There's, the color looks right. What have you got to complain about? You know, so, and as he, he agreed, he said, man, we're in a results game, you know, and I can't really complain about that. So, yeah, it's all good. Now, onto the clear coat stage, obviously. So, I've got actually this new gun. You might have noticed it's a um, bit of a new addition to the channel. So, Segola were nice enough to send this one out, and it's the latest limited edition from Segola. It's a Segola 4600 Extreme, so it's got the DVR Titania Pro air cap on it. So whatever the Pro means, I'll actually have to do a little bit more research on that before I do actually do a review on this gun, if I review it. And the fluid tip is 1.2 XL. I must admit, I actually have been enjoying using this gun. I find it uses a little bit more clear coat than I have been using with my Pro Light and my TE20, the good old, uh, you know, Gunny's fave. Um, but yeah, one thing I do like about these Segolas is all the air caps they have. They've pretty much got the same amount of air caps as uh, the Pro Light does. So, you know, you've got your HVLP, your Titanium, which is this one, which is pretty much, I'd say, your equivalent to your T110. Um, and then you've got your clear coat and your base coat, which is the Aqua one. So yeah, you've got a nice selection of air caps, which is, I think, always a great thing. One thing that I've always thought sort of lets down the I what is and the Sardas in the industry is that they've only really got the two air caps to choose from. And yeah, the Segola having such a wide range of fluid tips and air caps was probably, definitely actually, a contributing factor in it getting such a good spot in my recent top 10 spray gun video. So the clear coat I used on this one was obviously the Standox Standard Clear and I used Fast Hardener, which I usually do pretty much all year round because we need it to dry fast unless I'm doing like a really big job if I'm doing a respray I might go and use slow hardener but obviously there was one little bit of silicon here there was actually another one little one on uh, the rear door there as well apart from that there was a couple of nibs in it nothing too bad um, but yeah look I've found the standoff standard clear is while it's a great clear it's a little bit on the thinner side so um, it's not as forgiving as some of the full HS or low VOC clear coats, I swear. Like, when you're using one of those top of the line clears, you basically don't even have to be a good painter to get a clean paint job, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, so it's not excuses, it's the truth. Like, if you're using a, such a thick clear, basically there might be little bits of dust under the clear coat, but the clear coat is so thick that it just fills them all up. Most painters in the trade will probably know exactly what I'm talking about if you have used those HS clears anyway. So that's the job uh, out there in the sun. And as I say, I reckon that's a pretty killer blend. Like, obviously, I, you know, hit it on, like, the, the shapes of the panel where the door handle was. So that's another good thing to do when you are doing blends. Just look for areas to hide the blend. You're never really going to see it around such a tight spot. You've got so much going on there. You've got body lines. You've got door handles and all these different shapes going on. Another thing I've actually found is, like, leave the color a touch light. 
So that's what I did with this color. I mixed the color up, I sprayed it out, had a look at it. I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was a touch light. Now to get it perfect, I reckon I probably would have put like a little bit of silver in it to deepen it up, like make that uh, silver a little bit deeper. But I found that that base coat blender that I sprayed down at the start actually stays a little bit milky blue. So if you match your color a little bit milky and blue, you will never see the blend. So I reckon that's a pretty killer job right there. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I hope you learned something out of it. Until next time, get out there and paint some shit. Thanks for watching, and this has been another Gunman Production. Goodbye.